is Crystal. I relocated to the Caribbean island of Aruba where I live with my husband and dogs over four years ago. I own a travel consultant company based out of the United States, but we spend a lot of our time traveling the world. This life I built at one time was just a dream, but welcome to my reality. the DV Aruba all-inclusive and we are here to answer a very popular question is all-inclusive in Aruba worth it so follow us along during our stay and we'll show you the pros the cons but first let's get to a room tour considering all-inclusive in Aruba. Are you a drinker? Do you drink alcohol when you're on vacation? Are you a big drinker or are you a one to two drink a day person? If you're a big drinker, all-inclusive might be worth it. Okay, so if you are a very specific alcohol drinker, then that's one thing that might not work for you at all-inclusive. For instance, I really like Tito's vodka and they actually don't serve it here. This is about the extent of their alcohol selection. So if you're picky, maybe not the thing for you to do. the new cafe they installed on the DB side of the resort and we just got some ice lattes and some frappes and it's actually really good. There's also some pastries there. It never rains in Aruba they say. So one of the major things to take into consideration is obviously pricing between all-inclusive and non-all-inclusive in Aruba. So just for an example, I searched one full week, two adults in October, which is typically a lower season. So we have the Ryu Palace going for about $4,700 total for two, Barcelo starting at $3,700 for two. The DV was showing sold out on Expedia, so I just hopped on their site, chose a different week. It's going for about $4,600 total for two. Now remember, these rates all include all of your taxes, all of your food, all of your alcohol. So you're basically prepaying for everything you're gonna be doing. Now, to put it into perspective, the Marriott Stellaris, $4,300 a night. That is not all-inclusive. You still have to pay for your food, pay for your alcohol, pay for everything that entire week. Renaissance Wind Creek, 3600 Let's find the Hyatt, that's one of my favorites. Hyatt Regency, 5200 for a week, and you're not getting anything included. Now, if you wanna go a little bit more affordable route, we have the Embassy Suites, that's a new property. It's very beautiful, about $2,000 for a week. Radisson Blue, another newer property, $2,300 a week. Holiday Inn Resort, $2,000 a week. So those might make a little bit more sense. So when you're looking at the more affordable properties and then you factor in food and drink for the week, obviously, you know, it comes out to be a little bit closer to the total price of all-inclusive. But some of those luxury type hotels, the Marriott, the Hyatt, we didn't check the Ritz, but I believe it's about $6,000 for the week. Yep, $6,000. Um, you know, then 
that's really a niche type of stay. Those are more luxury type properties, so you know, not for everyone, and those are the type of properties that I usually like to stay at. But for someone who's looking to keep it affordable, you know, it probably doesn't make sense to pay as much as you could at an all-inclusive in Aruba and then still have to go out and spend money while you're there. It's really gonna come down to the dates you're traveling, the type of place you wanna stay at to see if you think that it's it would make sense for you. drinks you have to go to the bar on the tamarind side that paparazzi it's the italian restaurant but they have a little bar seating area best martinis best drinks you're gonna find best cocktails you're gonna find at the resort so good you want to be on youtube i don't mind the best bartender i can't in the say that world. i can't say that oven you can get um, all kinds of pizzas paninis they do chicken salad um, all different so for a quick snack Beautiful. 
Okay. Yeah. Your hottest and lots of drinks. That's three. Okay. It's two for us. Um, the beach is one of the nicest beaches. Uh, there's no seaweed. It's really clear. Pros, you can drink as much as you want. Cons, um, the service can be a little slow. There are fun people. And then there's Mary. Shout out to Eduardo was amazing, best oh, bartender Guido. ever. Guido. Guido. Yeah, I think if you're well, looking for a vacation where you're just gonna like chill, hang out, eat, drink, you don't really want to do a lot, it's a good spot. If you're more like action packed and you want to go off to all the restaurants and stuff, then maybe. And eat all the amazing food in Aruba, yeah. you don't want I've always been very much no on this bit of Aruba, but I will say I do see why a lot of people want to do them. There are certain things about it, especially sometimes the price factor. If you're paying the price for certain hotels, it does make more sense to go the all inclusive So anyway, in conclusion, I think for certain people this is probably the right choice, for others maybe not. It really is a personal decision. It depends on you, it depends on if you have kids, if you're with a group, all these other things. But I think we gave a pretty good idea of the pros and cons of all-inclusive in Aruba. And we'll see you guys next time.